Here you are looking at a top 10 all-time favorite card trick of mine. It's actually four for the price of one. And we'll get right into it. These first two are similar because they were taught to me by an elder. And the last two were taught to me by a younger. We just inventing words. But anyway, on this first one, as you notice, I have a volunteer come up and they can shuffle and cut as much as they want until their heart is content. It doesn't matter. They could do this all day. We got time. And then once they're satisfied, the important thing is that they break the cards down into thirds. For this first one, they're going to look through the cards and find one that they like. Not that. That's too obvious. Lucky seven, no way. Two of hearts, like lovers, no way. Got to find something you don't think I'll be able to get when I'm blindfolded. My back is turned or I'm out of the room. And then they find something that strikes their fancy. Remember, keep it on the bottom. Don't do like I did earlier where I had it on the top and then the mathematical self-working trick didn't work out. So, And also, don't forget what card it is. And then you're going to silently spell it. Don't spell it out loud because then I'll know what card you got. So silently spell it. Drop the rest of the cards on top. Don't make the other mistake I did where I was counting them in my hand and doing a constant rotation and never having the cards end up on top and then my count was off as well. Now here's the second most crucial part of the trick is that you have your volunteer pick an invisible card and don't tell you what it is. And once again, spell it out and do it silently so that the magician can't hear. And then drop the rest of the cards. And this is what's known as Scorny Speller. And the key to it is that you often forget what your original card is. Don't do that. We remember what our original card is. And to prove it, I'll have you silently spell it one more time. Drop the rest of the cards. I, the magician, turn back around. I re-enter the room where I unblindfold myself. And I say, okay, since you used this, which one did you use? You, you're honest and you tell me that you used this one. And I turn it over and I say, is that your card? Wow, you did all the work, actually. Let's do another one. Again, we need thirds, but we'll shuffle and cut. And make thirds. Now, these are my two volunteers' thirds, and this is my third. I'm gonna make a prediction. And I'll do it out loud so you can follow along and so that you don't get bored. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. One plus six is seven. Seven from sixteen is is nine right yep so my prediction is nine no wait seven from 16 yeah it's nine so we got it and i found a nine i put my prediction face down right there in full view now here they go they're going to do the same procedure but they don't know about the last step of subtracting from 16 because they don't have to do that so here we go one two three four Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. One plus seven is eight. So they'll look for that. Eight. Basically, you're taking a two-digit number and turning it into a one-digit number if you forget this step. They don't have an eight in their deck. They can borrow from my deck. And here's an eight. And on to the second person. We'll move this out of the way over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. One plus nine is ten. One plus zero is one, so that's an ace. 
and an ace plus eight is nine. So their grand total is nine. And I see it right here. So I'll replace that with this. And let's see if my prediction came true. And indeed it did. So that's two tricks down. And now we got two more. And these are the young folks that taught me this one. I'll get this. You need all 52 cards on this one, or maybe not. It doesn't matter. And I'm going to put down five card predictions. One, two, three, four, and five. Now, what I need you to do is either say yes, you want it to match, or if you don't want it to match, say no. So the first person, they're being difficult, and they say, no, I don't want it to match. So I'll put this down. And then the next person, they're being nice enough. And they say, yes, I want it to match. So then I'll put this here and I'll move this one up some. Then the next person says, no, I don't want it to match. So I'll put that there and leave it where it is. Then the next person says, yes, I want it to match. So then I'll put this here and move this up. And then the last person said, yes, I want it to match. So I'll put this here and move this up. Now let's first look at the nine matches. You got a five, so you need a five. No five, get rid of that. You got a seven, you need a seven. That's not a seven, get rid of that. You got a queen, we want these to match because that's what you said, you said yes. And we got a match, queen for queen. You got a jack, you need a jack. And you got a jack, and it's the same color, so that matches. You got a red four, and you got a red four. It's a perfect match. We want to give a thank you and a shout out to the young fella who sound like Sheldon from Big Bang Theory. Now we come to the last one, which I would call the Brooklyn boy. He got that thick accent. I learned this trick from him. And you're going to go three across. One, two, three, and underneath it, three more. One, two, three. And you're going to do this till you run out of cards. Now, there's no setup to this, really. They can pick from any of the columns that they want. And let's just say they're trying to be difficult. They figure, oh, you probably think I'm going to go from the middle. I'm not. And I'm not going for the first one, so I'll pick this one. That's fine. They pick it up. They find the card that they want. We'll keep it simple, silly, and we'll go with the Queen of Hearts. She's still in people's hearts. We can put it on either pile. The volunteer doesn't tell me which card that they're using, nor do they tell me which pile they're putting on, but it's one of the two. Actually, I can watch this part. They put it on this one. Gather these up, then I gather these up. And then the pile that it came from, put on top. And then we're back to the drawing board. Same steps we did earlier, we do again. Three across. Now here's where the magician has to use their psychic ability to try to figure out where their card is. And I'm getting a fishy feeling that it's not this section. So I take this away. And I got a sneaky suspicion that it's not this one. So I take this one away. Which leaves me with this. And now I'm, all I want to do is spell find card. F-I-N-D-C-A-R-D. No spaces. And let's do it. And this is the time where we're going to do a rotation because we probably don't have enough cards to just go flat, flat line. So let's go. F I N D C A R D. And turn over the next card. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a four out of four, a four threat, four feature, a double feature twice. And it makes the top 10 of my all-time favorite card tricks.